Hello and welcome back to Man vs Film. I'm going to be talking about The Boston Strangler, a movie that I hadn't seen in a number of decades, but one that had stuck with me. Uh, but it wasn't really the story that had stuck with me in this one. It was the filmmaking style within this. The use of overlays, the use of split screens and things like that really stuck with me and was uh, something that I was eager to go back to because it's an editing style that I really appreciate and really enjoy. Now we are thrown into this movie with a terrific cast. We've got Tony Curtis, Henry Fonda, George Kennedy for starters and it's all about the true life story of the Boston Strangler, someone who killed 13 women brutally and about um, the lawyer um, prosecutor put in charge of the, the case, the lead detective trying to hunt down the information and you get Tony Curtis as the main bad guy who's Albert DeSalvo, this everyday man who even in a height of a world where everybody is terrified, still seems to be getting access into these people's houses and committing brutal acts of murder. Now, the performances are amazing. I think Tony Curtis is excellent, particularly in the latter half of the movie when he really comes into it, especially in the mental hospital when they are uh, talking to him and he starts to become introverted and locked within his mind is fascinating. I think George Kennedy as the policeman on the beat is terrific investigating people asking the questions. I think Henry Fonda is just a standout. He still has that carryover from 12 Angry Men for me that makes me just indicatively trust the man uh, in whatever he's doing and I think the performances are great. But one of the standouts for me, like I mentioned, is the filmmaking technique. The fact that it uses multiple uh, um, layered images, and the fact that it's all kind of mosaic put together, where you can have um, an image of a man on one side of the screen and a close up on his face on the other side of the screen. It's very artistic and it's very uh, visually representative of the way people are feeling. And I think that's one of the key things. It's not there just for flash and to show off that this can be done. It's there from a narrative point of view to show, the, show either the scattershot thinking of people or to show how introverted they are on certain little uh, things that they are doing that's being focused on by the camera. I feel as though the movie kind of loses steam in the latter half though, although it takes over into a more character study of De Salvo, I think that it kind of loses the kind of motivation that it had all the way through the start of the movie. I think the fact that it is a true life crime and it ultimately comes to a, a not as satisfying ending as you would possibly like, kind of leads it to be a little bit of a downbeat. But I can see how this influenced other movies later on within the police procedural kind of genres, particularly Zodiac. It feels like a precursor to a lot of that and I do think that from a filmmaking perspective it's essential to watch, to see the split diopters, to see the overlays, to see the mosaic style of filmmaking is something that's really different and very, very memorable. I like the Boston Strangler. I didn't love it as much as I thought I was going to, which is a real shame. I still think it's worth watching because of the technique that, that uh, Fleischer gives this one, who is a terrific director, did uh, 10 uh, at Rillington Place, a bunch of other movies that are all wonderful. Um, if you like this one, I think you should go and check out the director, maybe check more of his uh, filmography and see if there's something there that you like as well. I'd love to know your thoughts on The Boston Strangler, particularly the filmmaking. What did you think of it and the story? And do you see the kind of parallels between this and maybe Fincher's Zodiac that comes later on? Let me know in the comment box below and I'll see you next time on Man of E Film.